This meeting is being recorded. Um, so, alaikum everyone. Uh, we'll just wait for a couple of minutes more and then uh, we'll start with the event. Okay, yes. Uh, so hello everyone and uh, thank you for joining the Safe So webinar uh, for the feature rele May feature release. And uh, we usually have our webinar around um, the first week of uh, the month, but this time we've delayed it because, um, because of our uh, Eid holidays. So that's why I wanted to wish you all a very uh, happy Eid as well. And I hope you guys had a great uh, time off um yeah so um moving further for those of you who are new here i would just like to give you a recap of what this event is uh we basically talk about all the features that we have launched um in this month and then uh, we'll be giving you the demos for it um so uh, this is just a brief of what this event is uh, just to um, tell you uh, about what happened in our last webinar, we, uh, we announced some um, exciting new features where we talked about our web application, our mobile application, and then followed by some minor system improvements. Uh, so we'll be following the same pattern this time as well. And uh, we also talked about um, in detail how our mobile application worked and uh, we gave a demo of it as well. And similarly, we'll be doing it in this um, uh, in this webinar as well. Yeah, um, just to uh, explain you the logistics of this event is that first we'll be explaining all the features that we've launched. Uh, we'll be um, uh, talking about them. We'll be giving you a demo, what value they're bringing. And then uh, we'll be uh, taking in any questions uh, that you guys have. Uh, you guys have to keep your uh, mics uh, at mute at all times so that um, you know there's no disruption. And uh, at the end or during the event, uh, if you feel that you have any questions, if you need any clarity, you can simply drop us a message in the chat window and then uh, we'll be answering them uh, accordingly. Okay, um, so just to, um, yeah. 
So uh, moving on, um, we will also uh, we basically show you the upcoming innovations as well. This is the fifth May pipeline that we followed. Uh, this is the fifth June timeline that we. Uh, these are the fifth June updates that we'll be following, and then followed by uh, a rough update on the July updates that will be coming. So this is just to give you an overview of the three months plan that we have. And uh, this is how we plan and follow things um, in our sprint uh, development cycle. Um, and this is just to give you an idea of how we take things um, uh, forward with our uh, product developments. Okay, um, so uh, moving on to the agenda of this event, uh, we will be covering three, uh, three new features in the web, web application that we've launched. Uh, followed by uh, three new updates in the mobile application that we've launched and followed by some minor system improvements that we've done. Uh, so um, the web application and the mobile application will be um, discussed in detail and we'll be giving you a demo of each feature. Uh, but the system improvements, we'll be just talking about them. And if you have any further questions on it, you can either contact uh, your relevant CS member, uh, customer success member, or uh, you can also let us know in the chat window. Okay, so uh, moving on to the first uh, part uh, of our webinar, that is uh, the web application features. Uh, yeah, so um, after a, a very long time, uh, we've got so many distributions on board um, and uh, we've been hearing for, uh, from our customers that we wanted a, a return on investment calculator. Um, so we finally made it and we've launched it after doing a thorough uh, research. Um, we sat down with our customers. We um, uh, we did a lot of uh, requirement gathering and then we were able to uh, make a, a very extensive uh, return on investment calculator where you'll be able to log in your expenses, um, any distributor margins that you guys have um, uh, either system calculated or uh, if you want to, um, you know, enter it manually uh, with, yeah, it, if you want to enter it manually, then you can uh, enter them manually as well. Uh, you can also define uh, budgets. And then uh, there, there's also approval hierarchy for um, ex any expenses that you've logged. This is also um, an optional um, uh, field basically. And then, uh, at the end, you, you get to see the ROI of your uh, distribution. Uh, so this is a very extensive module that we have uh, um, developed. And uh, we also mentioned in our webinar communication that this is a paid add-on. So if you guys are interested in using it, once we've given the demo, if you have um, any, um, if you would like to opt for it, then you can request your uh, customer success member and then we can uh, move on uh, with, um, uh, with you know using uh, enabling this uh, feature uh, on your uh, instance uh, so i'll be uh, handing over the session to maliha she will be uh, giving you the demo uh, for this roi uh, feature so over to you maliha thank you saman um, i'll sh just share my screen Is my screen shared? Yeah. Okay. Great. So um, this is our ROI module. Um, once you have it enabled onto your um, environment, uh, there's an option where you can go and set up its settings. So you go onto your settings, you go to your system settings, or you'll have ROI settings. Um, similarly, um, ROI is um, has multiple options and is based on the settings that you set. Uh, depending on what you've enabled and disabled, your view here will look like this. Budget and expense approval uh, hierarchy is an optional feature where you can switch it off. Um, similarly, in our distribution distributor margins, you can also uh, you can also try to. Um, there are two options where you can uh, set it up by yourself or the system can calculate. So we'll just go through the first flow, which is where you set up your expenses and your sub expenses. Sure. Um, the idea is that you can open the main heads of expenses here, 
which I have already predefined here, which are as visible. And in the sub expenses, where you further detailed subunits of the main heads that you've opened. This just helps um, in clarifying and keeping everything very transparent. I can show you a record. Um, this is what it looks like. If I want to set up a sub expense also, we can go through that. You set up a main, you select a main expense type, you enter the name of the title you want to set up the sub expense for, which is, I can say, um, electricity. You can define subsidy for it, yes or no. Subsidy is an option where a manufacturer wants to subsidize a particular expense or a sub expense for the distributor. Moving forward, moving forward, we have options for distributor margin. We have an option to upload a new margin, update and download all the distributor margin. Distributor margin, when I add in a new one, we have options for two. This is setting based. You can enable the special margin or disable it, whereas distributor margin will be enabled. Distributor margin also you can set up a system calculated here, yeah, user input. Here. If you're saying user input, you have an option here to upload it. Um, the format of uploading is such that uh, you select your uh, you select your distributor and what product cry product hierarchy you want to set it up on, you can select that. Everything, any product hierarchy you wish for. If I say business unit, I can download a format. The format is all the business units under that manufacturer, under that client can be seen here. And similarly, you can add in set up a value and I'll just upload that same. When you upload, you have an option to edit it on runtime as well. We'll just show you how that is. I've uploaded the values. Here you will have an option to change the fee, change the numbers you've added in. If you're okay with it, you can go ahead and save it. You save and you upload it. Uh, at one particular time, you can have at least one distributor margin active, all the rest will be marked inactive. Um, you can have an active distributor margin and a special margin at one time. Moving over on to budgets. Budgets are um, defined per sub expense that you have. So just, I can show you how you enter one. all the sub expenses for this particular um, for collected expenses are here and i can download a format for that so the format is such the distributor code the expense and the sub expense and you can enter the quantity and the value you have for the budget this is again like i said it's an optional uh, feature. If you will enable it from the settings, you can use it. The idea is you set in a budget for the expenses that a distributor can incur. Um, the idea is if you exceed the set budget, you have a master user here, which will, in case you're exceeding the budget, the budget goes to them to see if they can approve it or reject it. So we come down to expense log. Expense log, I can log an expense for you. Here we have the investment section, which if you are already using our um, primary ordering and our credit module, you'll be able to see all of these are predefined. 
um, investment makes up of three different things, which is the market credit, the stock on floor and the stock in transit. The market credit is everything that you have lent to the market, the stock on floor, which you have in, in your stock right now and all the st stock you've all ordered but hasn't reached you yet. So which is also your investment. Um, any outstanding claims that you can set up here any other investment that you have already made and that's not in our system can also be populated here. Um, these two are input fields. The top three ones are locked fields because they're being fetched from our system. All the other main expenses that I had created in the first screen are here with their sub expenses here. So you can set up the quantity and the expense you also have an option to attach the proof of your expense that this uh, attaching an expense can also be um, set up in your settings. You can mark it mandatory, right? Um, in additional expense, I'll also just punch in some dummy data. So all of the calculations that I'm punching in here are total. You can view the total of all the expenses that I've added here. So in our settings, we've marked the attachment mandatory. We can switch it off to non-mandatory. And even for the approval hierarchy, I'm switching it on because it's a lengthy process of approving your uh, expenses and sub expenses. So what we'll do is So we have the budget on. I'll have to switch the budget off because if you don't have a budget defined, it does not let you set in the expenses. So we, since I closed the um, approval hierarchy, this is approved status automatically. Um, if I would have let it go through the approval hierarchy, this would have just been um, open status. And then if you approve or reject, the status reflects here. Uh, moving on to the ROI calculator, um, we'll generate a new ROI. One more thing um, to reflect quickly, we can only calculate ROIs for all our previous months, not the existing month or for the future, because all the transactions that we are calculating are supposed to be already incurred. 
And since when we were setting up our uh, distributor margin, that was on the business unit we set up. So that has been calculated here. The margin is calculated here. Uh, special margin we did not set up, so that's zero. All the expenses are here. Um, the net profit is calculated as such, the investment as such, and our ROI is calculated here. If we save the calculated ROI, this is locked, and we cannot further recalculate it for the particular month and the distributor. That is because once you finalize this, um, it should not be editable. Um, we have an option to save it and also recalculate it because um, there are times that our invoices are not knocked off, that we don't have the exact or the accurate sale amount, or we don't have the exact amount for all our investments which are coming through our primary orders. So this gives you that option. If you also further download this, um, there's an Excel that is downloaded and all the fields that are here can be reflected there. Just like that, right? So that's that. And I can also save that and it can be reflected into the grid. So we have the ROI calculated for the month of April. Um, now over to you, Saman. Thank you, Maliha. Um, so guys, just to give you uh, an overview of what uh, Maliha explained, so uh, you, you guys um, must have understood that ROI, our return on investment calculator, um, was now a need on, uh, you know, distributions that they were, uh, so that they're able to look at how much, um, whether uh, the business that they've invested their money in is profitable or not. Uh, so this was a complete calculator where they can log in their expenses, they can view their investments, where they've invested their money. And then the sales that is uh, being automatically calculated in Salesflow because they've been using this uh, as a, uh, their distribution management system. Uh, so they can, uh, you know, uh, all these uh, three parameters are being catered uh, through our, the system and then uh, they can see a final uh, return on investment uh, percentage for a particular month. Okay, so that was uh, just a brief summary of what uh, the feature is about and uh, we'll move on to our next uh, web um, feature that is, uh, uh, that is uh, managing tax type transformation. Uh, so the problem statement here was that um, any SKUs that you guys opened previously, whether it was, um, let's say you, you guys uh, took in an SKU and you opened it as percentage SKU. And then now if uh, the tax regime uh, by the government has been updated for uh, those specific kind of SKUs, then you uh, then uh, this, the system was not capable enough to, uh, you know, change the tax uh, percent uh, tax type from percentage to uh, absolute right or absolute to percentage so this transformation was uh, previously locked in the system and uh, the system was not capable to do um, this transition so now we've enabled this uh, capability and now you uh, all of you will be able to edit a tax type and um, uh, so from absolute to percentage or, to, or from percentage to absolute, so now this transition is possible and uh, we'll be um, telling you about the certain limitations and validations also that we've put in place um, in order uh, for this feature to work. Uh, so Sharik will be giving uh, you a demo for this uh, feature. So over to you, Sharik. Thank you, Simon. Uh, let me share my screen. Share your screen. All right. So jumping in um, to what we have done in tax type transformation, um, you, but as someone suggested that uh, currently in our previous system we did not have the option to change it from change our text type from absolute to per, uh, percentage or from percentage to absolute. This was only set when the SQ was created. So now we have given our users the option that uh, they can uh, in the middle way, uh, once the, if the SQ is uh, currently created, they have the option to change it 
from percentage to absolute or from absolute to percentage. So if you can uh, see over here uh, in our products, we have uh, an option or tab SQU where all the SQUs are listed down. So let me pick one. Um, you'll pick an SQ, you'll go to edit records. Right. Uh, here you'll see a list of uh, the whole form of uh, information uh, related to the SQ, including the pricing as well. So this used to be this feature, uh, this uh, tab or uh, input used to be uh, freeze, but now you have the option to toggle it. And uh, once you do toggle it, let's say from if you I want to go from absolute to percentage, uh, you'll be prompted with this. So it suggests that since this uh, this pricing impacts the whole system, we have introduced prompts for our users to notify them that the new price will be implemented. So you can see over here that open orders and you know, SDRs and uh, stock returns uh, will be updated with the new pricing. So you do have the option to cancel it and go back. And if you, in case you want to settle your invoices on the uh, your uh, everything on the previous price, in case you're aligned with it, you can simply proceed. So one more validation that we have implemented over here is that you need to ensure that all your invoices are settled uh, before you make this change to ensure that um, the pricing used in the in the invoices is uh, uh, the updated one. So I have changed it from uh, absolute to percentage. Um, let me go to the spread. So uh, one thing you have to make sure is once you have uh, toggled it, you have to um, add on the new price as well. So yeah, without that, you cannot proceed. So this will require an addition of new price. Let's say I can add it to 17. And, and you can see over here, this inactive price was uh, I had absolute text type, but now we can edit in uh, person text, text type as well. So let me just. And I can proceed. So once this has completed, um, your new price, which was set to May 17, will be applicable now. And all the previous prices will go to inactive. One thing I also want to point out that we have added is let me go back to edit record and we have added the ability uh, for you to uh, in the pricing grid uh, see only those prices that are uh, active at the moment but you have a toggle button that you can uh, click and see inactive prices as well depending on the number of prices you have it can be 15 to 20 um, on average so we have added this feature as well all right so uh, this is most of text type, uh, Simon, back to you. Thank you, Sharik. Um, yeah, um, so moving on to the next feature that we've uh, worked on is uh, the Journey Custom Calendar. Um, so previously we launched um, another calendar type, um, and uh, and we got some questions about our JC calendar. Uh, when will it be launched? So we finally worked on it. Um, so JC calendar is uh, basically a custom calendar that you can um, is a flexible calendar as well that you can define, and you can set up your own quarters, your your months, and uh, the number of days in a week that um, that you would like to set up. So it's basically a very configurable calendar that you uh, can make. And once it's made in the system, then all your reporting, all your um, um, basically the system will then be adjusted according to that uh, kind of calendar, right? Um, so we'll be talking about it in further detail uh, when Sharik will be giving you the demo for it. So over to you, Sharik. Right. <clears throat> Let me share my screen again. All right. Yep. 
here we are so talking about the jc calendar just as we have a physical calendar right now we have a more customizable calendar uh, for our users so if you go into settings and um, in the tabs of calendars yeah let me just go back you'll have calendar information and you can select a calendar out of uh, these these are already saved ones that i was using for testing you can create a new one as well uh, let's go for a new calendar let's name it uh, and what we what you have uh, the option in this calendar is that you can set the um, start day of the week it could be let's say wednesday it could be a thursday and apart from that, you have multiple quarters and you have the ability to assign how many weeks or JC weeks you want to have uh, in uh, in each JC month of the calendar. Let's say it's, I'll set this four and I'm gonna set this to five, right? So let's pick a date and so this looks good. Let me just generate and enter and yeah. Once I've clicked at generate uh, JC calendar, you'll see an auto-generated um, calendar over here. Uh, all the the weeks are JC weeks are aligned over here with the number of dates days in we in each week. So, um, what the user have the ability over here is to you know toggle around with the number of uh, uh, weeks he want to have in a JC month. So, let's say let me just set this again. One validation that we have set over here is that the total weeks should be set to 20, uh, 52. Uh, you cannot generate a JC calendar unless this uh, validation is completed. So um, this looks good. Let me just go ahead and save it. All right. Um, if you go back, you can see that our uh, calendar is set for June 2025. Uh, uh, we do have the options to update it as well. Let's say you want to set your uh, start day of the week to Tuesday. Um, yeah, I can update it and I can you know, give it a look again. So yeah, this will be updated to Tuesday. And then again, you can delete, as a, delete this as well. One thing you have to ensure is that uh, no two JC calendars can overlap in dates. So um, once, if we have a JC calendar for June 2025, this will prolong till July uh, 2026. So you, in that duration, you cannot have another JC calendar overlapping. One more thing we need to uh, take care is that you need to ensure that the month you're selecting, the starting month of your JC calendar, will be uh, the the advanced month. It couldn't. It cannot be the current month. It should. Be, it cannot be the past month as well. It should be a future month uh, for the selection of the calendar, like uh, fiscal calendar works or any other calendar. So yeah, uh, that's it from my side, Simon. Thank you, Shari. Okay, so. Um... Mm. Let me reshare my screen. Yeah. Uh, so moving on uh, to the next uh, part of our agenda, that is we'll be talking about the mobile application um, and the features that we have launched um, over there. Uh, so there are three new features that uh, we'll be talking about is um, we've made some improvements in our uh, store tagging um, uh, module. And um, so now, uh, currently, what uh, what an order booker has to do is that he has to manually sync up. So uh, we we've also eliminated uh, manual sync up. So you can you know uh, set up a specific time on which you want your uh, order bookers to uh, you know auto sync up, and then at that specific time in the presence of um, internet, uh, the sync ups can be triggered for an order booker. Okay, so this is the second thing that we've worked on. And then um, how we can make unproductive um, stores 
um, if, uh, reasoning more effective. So uh, we've given um, some custom, uh, basically you can set up your custom uh, unproductive store reasoning uh, options and then an order booker can select the actual reason of why uh, a store has been made unproductive. Uh, so these are the three uh, application updates that we'll be talking about in the demo further. Uh, so I'm handing over the session to Ali who will be giving you uh, the demo for the mobile application. Hello everyone. Uh, like someone just mentioned, I'm just gonna give a quick rundown of uh, the new feature that we are gonna be launching. So let's first start off with uh, um, auto sync up. So you go into your settings and then you move through to your system settings and then you will see a tab for auto sync up show up in your left column. Uh, you go over here, you turn on auto sync up, select your distribution and then you select your time. So this is a 24 hour clock. So since uh, right now is 3.38, let's set this to 3.40, okay? So we go over here. So 3.40 p.m., we save it. Um, now we can move on to the app. Uh, we first sync down just to make sure that we've saved these changes. Okay, so we have sync down and we are just gonna have to wait one minute until um, the auto sync up feature is triggered. So if any of you are wondering um, how this actually works, it checks your internet connection and um, at the time that you've set, it'll uh, just trigger the cron job that will run and uh, sync up all the data on the auto bookers app. Uh, now, for example, if the order booker is not connected to the internet, it will check for internet connectivity in 30 minute intervals, right? And then as soon as it does find um, the internet connection, it will auto sync up all the data. And so we are just going to wait another 30 seconds um, until we see the auto sync. So as you can see at 3.40, uh, the auto sync up was triggered and uh, all the data on the application was synced up, right? So that was our first feature. Um, next, we can move on to custom store, um, unproductive store reasons, right? So we go into geography, uh, unproductive store reasons, and over here, you can now add your custom store on productive store reasons, right? So we can add one right here. We can say webinar demo and add an unproductive store reason, right? So successfully added, we go back to our application um, and we sync down again, right? Okay, now that we have a video, uh, now that we have sync down, we can go into our visit plan. And then click on our store, do you want a service? No. So another thing we have included is that Okay, so we can take multiple images. So if we click over here, we take our first image, we can save this. 
And then we can click again and take multiple images for unproductive stores, which is something we couldn't do um, earlier. Right? So this is a new improvement. And then we can click on the reason for not servicing the store. And as you can see, we have webinar demo uh, list below. Right? So I can just cancel this and move out. Right. Now, the last uh, improvement that we have is in store tagging. So we can just go to an existing store and check over here. So um, you have uh, the mandatory fields, which are now going to be shown uh, with a hysteric. Right. And then you also have um, these length indicators that a field should must be 11 digits long or 13 characters long, 15 digits, however many. And then we have also provided visual aids for the order bookers to know that these are the amount of digits that will be needed. And just to help uh, assist in the tagging process. And so if you scroll down, If you scroll down and save this, you will now get a prompt that tells you to review the highlighted fields. So now the fields that are mandatory and need to be filled will be highlighted uh, in red, just to give more indication to the order booker um, for whatever information that is required in the store tagging assessment. So that's all from my end. Thank you, Saman. Thank you, Ali. Okay. So let me share back my screen. Yeah. Um, so we've covered our, um, yeah. So we've covered our uh, web application, we've covered our mobile application. Now moving on to the third part of our uh, agenda that is uh, talking about the minor system improvements that we've done. Uh, so uh, just to verbally talk about uh, the system improvements is that we've added number of boxes in the order summary, which is also setting base. So if you, if previously you uh, guys were viewing it on cartons, now we've uh, added um, a setting where you can uh, basically view your order summary in um, the number of boxes as well. Uh, secondly, we've also, because of uh, Google's uh, recent update, uh, we've also um, implemented uh, and uh, made visible the privacy policy uh, in the mobile application. Uh, then thirdly, talking about uh, PGP management uh, grid optimization, we've um, since uh, PGP management uh, is something that you do for every order booker, it was it was becoming a very extensive grid, and uh, you know uh, any search operations and uh, any additions, uh, editing in that uh, grid was uh, was taking a lot of time. So we've uh, optimized it as well uh, recently. Uh, and then uh, moving on to app user classification is that uh, you can now classify whether your order booker is uh, basically you can mark in any tags in your uh, on your app user. So if your app user is from a certain category, let's say if he's a wholesale uh, app user, right? So you can uh, mark in uh, mark him as a wholesale app user, um, and then. Um, if he's a you know retail uh, app user, then you can mark him as a retail uh, app user. So you can classify your app users now. Okay. Uh, the second last thing that we've done is that recently we um, the, and we've talked about it in the last uh, few webinars as well that uh, we launched our MSS option. That is a must uh, sell option that you can set on SKUs whether you want it to be a. Uh, uh, whether you want it to be, uh, you know, uh, this specific SQ should be sold in this particular quantity on a specific channel. That was the feature that we recently launched. Uh, so we uh, did not have uh, bulk updates for it. So now we've uh, made bulk updates for both value and quantity. So now with the help of a simple CSV sheet, uh, CSV file, you will be able to update um, bulk MSS um, as well. 
the last thing that we've done is that we've uh, added um, custom a uh, customer uh, custom field for SKU segregation. So let's say um, there are certain specific SKUs that you would like to categorize. Uh, it's it's basically like in um, like the SKU attributes that you've been using, but now you'll be able to rename the field as well. Uh, so let's say you have uh, an SKU categories uh, such as powder, right? So you can uh, create that powder cu custom field and then you can mark it on your SKU so that, uh, so all those SKUs that have that uh, field uh, marked onto them would be uh, classified as powder uh, based SKUs. So this is, um, uh, this is an SKU segregation that we've uh, created in our system. You can, um, it's a custom field, so you can uh, name whatever you like according to your business uh, case and requirement. Uh, so yeah. Um, so this is just to um, briefly tell you about the system improvements that we've worked on. These are uh, minor updates that we've done. Therefore, we've not included them in the demo uh, for it. But if you still need any further clarity on uh, what these improvements are, um, you can all you can um, basically ask uh, the questions in the chat window, or you can ask your relevant uh, customer success person as well. Okay. Um, so just to give you uh, a brief of uh, how our 5th June uh, pipeline looks like, or how our 5th July pipeline looks like, and then um, uh, how our 5th August pipeline looks like. So July and August are uh, still subject to change, but this is how the June uh, pipeline will look like, and this is what we are uh, working on. Um, we'll be talking about what we've uh, released in the next webinar that will uh, that will be around the first week of June only. Okay, um, so guys, this was um, it uh, from our side. If you have any questions on the features that we've talked about in today's webinar, or if you have any suggestions that um, if we can improve on anything, um, what you would like us to improve on about these sessions, what would you like us to cover in more detail? Any suggestions, comments, or um, questions that you have, you may drop them in the chat window and uh, we'll be happy to answer them. Oh no, I was on mute this whole time. Okay. Okay, my bad guys. Um, let me then uh, go back and uh, just do, um, I'll brief you guys again on what these system improvements are that I've talked about. Uh, so number of boxes in the order summary, uh, setting based, um, uh, we've made this. Um, yeah, so the number of boxes in the order summary um, is uh, that at first you guys were only able to view it in uh, carton, cartons. So now we've given the option of uh, defining, um, of basically turning on the setting and then, um, you know, making it on um, and the number of boxes as well. So we've given that visibility. Uh, then we've also made the privacy policy available in the application. So uh, due to recent Google security updates, we, um, we have to mandate uh, that the privacy policy is also uh, visible in the application. Then uh, we've uh, optimized our PGP management uh, grid as well. So since, um, so since uh, more and more order bookers uh, were being um, uh, you know, created in the system, you guys were making more PJPs, 
so that grid uh, basically uh, became uh, very slow. So uh, we've optimized it. So now it will uh, function more. Um, it will work faster uh, with uh, optimized search operations as well. Uh, then uh, app user classification. So now uh, you can you'll be able to classify your um, app users. That is, um, if you're certain, if a certain app user is, uh, let's say, from a powder category or a, or a wholesale app user, then you can uh, set up a classification for that app user um, using that uh, particular tag. Okay. Uh, moving on uh, to the second last. Um, point is that MSS bulk update. So recently, uh, we, we talked about it in our previous webinars as well. If you have been attending that uh, we recently launched our MSS option uh, for uh, both um, value and quantity, right? Um, so that um, so we've made a bulk update option, whether you want to turn or turn it um, active or inactive, you can simply uh, with the help of a CSV upload file, you can update the statuses of your uh, um, of your MSS that you've uploaded. OK, uh, then the third um, the, thir uh, the the last uh, um, item that we've uh, worked on is the SQ segregation. Uh, that is, um, let's say you have two SKUs, SKU-A and SKU-B, and SKU-A is a certain type of SKU, and SKU-B is a certain type of SKU, and you want to segregate uh, this difference in the system. Let's say one is a powder SKU and one is a liquid SKU. Then you can um, uh, then you can use that uh, field, and um, you can categorize your SKUs accordingly. Um, now this field is a custom field, so it can be labeled as uh, whatever you guys want. Um, so it's um, you know it's dynamic. Um, so whether you want to uh, rename it as product type, you can do it. If you want to uh, label it as um, any particular, let's say uh, variant, um, you can uh, rename it. So it's um, uh, customizable. Okay. Um, so these are just the um, system improvements that we've done and uh, what we've um, uh, basically the we've not given the demo for these is because these are minor updates and if you require uh, you know further clarity on these then uh, you can either drop um, us a message in the chat window we'll be uh, happy to answer them or you can ask your uh, relevant customer success uh, members as well um, if you need any um, you know, clarity on these items. Okay, um, so guys, that was um, it from our side on the uh, on the features for this release. We'll be talking about the upcoming innovations now. So this is the fifth uh, June plan that we're currently following, and this is how our fifth July and fifth August updates look like. Uh, so the fifth August and fifth uh, July updates are subject to change, but the fifth uh, June um, timeline is something that we're working on and we're trying to achieve. Um, and then we'll be further, um, we'll be talking about in our next webinar of what, uh, you know, value addition we're bringing. Um, and we'll be giving you a demo of these items um, further. So that is uh, it from our side. So if you have any questions, comments, uh, please feel free to uh, drop them in the chat window. And uh, we will answer your questions. Okay. Um, so we got a question earlier uh, regarding our SKU act, active SKU price list. So uh, Athar, we'll be checking uh, we'll be checking this on your instance. Uh, if after the session you can uh, ask your CS member to contact, uh, so basically to reach out to us and we'll check uh, why only uh, active pricing is not being downloaded. So we'll get this checked for you. Okay. Uh, so the next is, as my suggestion, kindly the ch button check in before are you serving the server penalty? We can't find out how much. Okay, so we've got a very detailed uh, time spent um, time spent report uh, available on the system, and uh, uh, after the introduction of this uh, check out button, we were um, able to. Uh, you know correctly calculate the check-in and the check-out time at a particular store 
Um, so uh, we are getting the right uh, times now for um, any order book that is servicing the store. So if you still uh, feel that uh, your, um, you know, your order booker's timing is incorrectly being shown on the instance, then um, you can share that particular case with us and we'll get it checked. So you can, uh, so Fezan, I'd suggest that you um, email this case uh, to your customer success member and we'll uh, address it further. Okay, so add some functionality if the store is unproductive, but order booker had spent time. I probably want to know how much time. Okay, so um, Athar, thank you for the suggestion. Uh, we will uh, see how we can incorporate this. Uh, we will need uh, to um, do some research on it and then we can let you know on um, basically in which sprint are we planning to make it. But thank you for the suggestion. Okay. Please optimize your reports as well. They're getting slow. Um, thank you, Ibrahim. Yes, uh, we will uh, check this. We will get this checked as well. Uh, basically, uh, reports depend on the uh, the size of the filters as well. So like if you're um, downloading uh, four to five months of data, then it will be taking uh, some time to um, you know uh, download all that kind of data. Uh, but if you're uh, taking out the report on days or even a couple of months, then uh, it still, uh, you know, works at a decent level. But we are optimizing our reports as well. We'll be announcing soon on uh, what changes we will be bringing on regarding the reporting section. Any uh, further questions or comments? Okay, uh, so if we have no further questions, then we can uh, move on to concluding the session. I would uh, really suggest that you um, uh, guys uh, let us know if there are any other members of your team that would um, you know like to join this session. Uh, also give us suggestions on how we can improve this session. Uh, what more features would you like us to introduce into Salesforce? You can also give us your feedback regarding that and uh, we'll uh, try to incorporate as um, as much as we can um, yeah and try to improve the session as well for you guys okay so uh, thank you everyone for joining and taking out the time uh, we'll be sharing the uh, recording of this session as well with you guys the presentation and if you uh, also need help with any uh, further documentation you can uh, let your customer success members know uh, for those uh, whose queries were not addressed, um, like Athar and Fazan, uh, the queries that you guys raised, you can email us, um, email your customer success person, and then they'll forward it, uh, forward those queries to us. We'll get that checked. Okay, so thank you everyone for joining and uh, see you all in the next session. Thank you.